to synthesize the material that we need to uh, we need to what build up according to the experimental um. so in this case the amount of energy carried by L an electromagnetic debate depends on the wavelength okay the shorter the wavelength the higher is energy so this one is based on energy so dia berkadar terus ke berkadar songsang berkadar songsang so semakin pendek wavelength tu semakin tinggi tenaga dalam electromagnetic waves so wavelength and frequency are linked properties of wave the shorter the wavelength the higher the frequency okay and and our and number two so frequency also tells you about the energy of a wave the higher its frequency the higher the energy so ini yang berdasarkan uh, from the previous slide uh, i teach you about the amplitude semua tu kan uh, so bergantung kepada that one press then uh, amplitude okay slide yang nombor empat belas kalau kamu beri ke situ eh. So okay what happen when waves hit a surface? Okay when electromagnetic wave hits a surface they can be reflected, absorbed or transmitted. Okay usually uh, according to this one uh, uh, okay rujuk uh, you can refer to page 164 because we have two different instrument to check the color, either spectrophotometer and colorimeters. Uh, usually, okay, uh, in my lab, usually I'm using UV visible spectrophotometer. Okay, that one because it's cover from 200 nanometer into uh, until 700 nanometer. They include the UV visible UV light and also the visible light. From the previous slide, kalau you all perasan yang slide yang saya ada aja pasal electromagnetic spectrum. Ha ni. Okay. So 400, uh, 400 to 700 cover untuk uh, visible. Cahaya yang kita boleh nampak. Uh, basically, the light we can see have white color. Okay, tetapi bila uh, when we apply the spectrum, spectrum ni macam segitiga yang kamu ada belajar dulu waktu science eh. Uh, yang kalau kamu boleh nampak, uh, pelangi lah. Apa tadi ada cakap uh, waktu hujan-hujan ni boleh nampak pelangi, uh, itulah. Sebabnya titisan air itulah yang jadi spectrum kamu. Okay, yang tukarkan cahaya kepada pelangi. Uh, sama macam in this case visible spectrum. So we have seven color for rainbow. Okay. Nombor malam uh, this one. Okay. Uh, so bila electromagnetic wave study tu hit a surface either it can be reflected, absorbed or transmitted. So we have different. Basically uh, transmitted ni, okay untuk reflect dengan transmitted, uh, usually we are using uh, something yang dia boleh pantul balik macam silicon substrate. Okay, kalau absorb ataupun dia lalu Uh, biasanya kita gunakan macam gelas, okay? So the wave behaves depends on the energy and the types of material. Yeah, the material that we use for transfer transformation. So for example, light waves are reflected by skin, by X-ray, pass straight through, okay? Okay, this is uh, discuss means explain you about the UV light. 
Okay. That's why macam you all needs to apply. Apa? Sebelum nak pakai apa-apa, kena pakai sun, sunscreen untuk protection. Sebab apa? Kalau kamu tak pakai sunscreen, cik ni dah nak ni pula. So, so x-ray yang selalunya ada dalam cahaya matahari tu, dia akan menembusi cahaya kamu dan kalau kamu ter, if you have more than means uh, absorb more UV light X-ray ni kamu akan terdedah kepada dia sakit kulit ataupun sebab uh, I have enak one case uh, post grad student kan kita biasa buat lab Uh, kita buka guna apa lah minat airflow kan and then she's mistaken uh, normal light tu as a UV light so she handle the experiment her experiment in the laminar airflow but she uh, switch on the UV light for 20 minutes what is the effects after that Efek dia malam tu, dia rasa mata dia sakit. Ha, 20 minit je, mata dia sakit, dia call saya. Suruh minta tolong bawa, dia duduk hostel. Minta tolong bawa dia pergi kecemasan. So daripada situ dia sakit, memang dia tak boleh nampak, dia terpaksa pejam mata ataupun kena pakai uh, cermin mata hitam. Okay, kesan UV light ni. So masalah and then doktor terpaksa bagi ubat uh, macam ubat untuk uh, bagi mata dia macam ubat titik so supaya mata dia tak berat ni lah. So doktor and then doktor tengok through microscope apa yang terjadi kat mata dia. So efek 20 minit UV tu membawa kesan kulit dia gatal-gatal and juga mata dia become red, red eyes. So that's the problem, effect the brain. So that's uh, means why UV or X-ray is very dangerous to us if we are terdedah by the UV light, something like that. Okay, sebab kita UV light kan atau uh, kita punya lamina untuk 10 minutes kan, 15 untuk sterilization. Okay. Okay, so if electro masa buat tak rasa ha, memang masa buat tak rasa apa. Dia kesan dia dia buat tu pagi, malam tu baru dia rasa. Kalau tak. <laughs> okay, that's on genetic. Okay. So if electromagnetic waves are absorbed, some of the energy is absorbed by the material. This one okay, kalau kamu tengok X-ray di eh no, X-ray digunakan untuk check position tulang kamu sama ada retak ke tak kan. Eh? Uh, so dia boleh tembus ke screen. Tu kegunaan x-ray pada in medical line. Okay, this usually increase the temperature of the material. But that's why kalau kamu buat x-ray, kamu tak boleh pakai apa-apa kan. Uh, so dia ada baju khas dia. So kamu tak boleh pakai metal something yang Uh, sebab material um, besi ke iron ke dia akan efek juga pada x-ray sebab tu kamu kena tangga semua. Sebab material tu dia boleh absorb something like yang memberi bahaya juga kepada kamu. Sebab tu kalau kamu uh, buat x-ray, kalau kamu accident ke apa, kamu kena tangga semua. Okay. Okay, particle model. EM, electric, electric magnetic. Energy may also be described in terms of joules and electron volt. Kalau kamu tengok kat sini. Okay, kat, hmm, yang ni saya ambil daripada mana. Tak apalah. Okay, da, dikira dalam bentuk joules dan juga electron volt. Sebab ada dalam UV ataupun X. Udara persekitaran kita ada radical bebas. Okay, radical bebas dalam bentuk elektron, elektron transfer. That's why, so electromagnetic can be measure ataupun describe in terms of joule, tenaga and also electron wood. 
So the rate of transfer of energy from one place to another, uh, in this case, daripada suns to earth, term as the flux of energy. So the flux mean flow and is measured in watts. So macam electrical pun, kalau kamu tengok electrical yang uh, dekat rumah. So measure dalam watt, kilowatt. Okay. Light is a stream flow of particle called photon. Okay. So the wind matter excited thermally or by nuclear process or by bombardment which are the radiation, photons are emitted. Okay, so the photons are emitted. Photons move at the speed of the light. Okay, so kelajuan cahaya tiga darat sepuluh kuasa lapan. Kan, saya ada ajar sebelum ni. So kelajuan cahaya lebih pantas daripada kelajuan bunyi. Okay, so the photon also exists as reflected or absorb radiation. Okay, the amount of energy associated with a photon is determined determine as Q ni dia punya equation untuk amount of energy H multiply by B so H is the flank constant so nanti ini untuk calculation ni saya akan buat I will do in the tutorial part okay so this one you need to know this constant is usually used okay that's why Okay, so EMR is both wave and a stream of particle. Okay, B, electromagnetic resonance is both wave and include also the stream of particles, particle by bus. Okay, so before we go to the color, so the color measuring equipment. Okay, tadi kalau kamu tengok, uh, Dia ada figure 4.2 effects of incident radiation. So IO initial dia will be reflex. Okay. And if you see uh, figure 4.8 rectilinear transmission. Okay. Yang ni kadar apa yang keluar melalui media sama. Dia tak ada pencapahan pun. Maksudnya dia terus drag true je. Okay. Tapi kalau a refraction of light by using the refraction of light you can see dia yeah, bila dua medium yang berbeza maksudnya udara masuk dalam air dia akan pergi kepada satah kan. Perasan tak? Ha. So sebab tu kalau kamu pergi swimming pool okay kamu tengok tak dalam kan? Uh, so itu adalah refraction of light. Tapi bila rupanya kamu masuk, uh, so sangat dalam. So sebab tu uh, kamu tengok dari atas tak nampak dalam tapi bila ya, sebab medium udara and then dia bila-bila masuk medium uh, water dia akan mendekati. Okay. So that's why uh, kedalaman tak dapat diukur mengu dengan menggunakan refraction of light. That's why we are using some, selalunya kalau case yang ni kita kena guna waves, bunyi. Okay, so kita nak tengok kedalaman tu, transmit, uh, kita transmit uh, bunyi and then bila bunyi tu pantul balik, so berapa masa yang dia ambil untuk pantul balik. So kita tak boleh guna light. Biasanya, uh, this one kita guna uh, untuk yang dalam dasar laut. Ingat tak case uh, MH37 eh? 370 eh. Ha. So dia macam mana dia gunakan satellite untuk check kedalaman tu kan. Dia guna bunyi punya apa nama dia. Ha. So macam dia guna wave. So bila dia transfer wave ke dalam uh, laut so dia nak tengok berapa yang wave terima balik. So baru dapat kita dapat. So kalau ada benda yang menghalang tu ha, macam mana dia nak check lah. Maybe dia ada partikel-partikel. So analysis tu melibatkan banyak. Okay, nak kena ni. Okay, so that's why. Right. Okay, we continue to the color. 4.2. Uh, page 162. Okay, 
can you see color? Okay, color is the important quality attribute in foods. Okay, dalam industri makanan. Okay, kalau kamu ada apa-apa pertanyaan, okay, ataupun you have question, you can ask me through the chat. Okay? Okay, color is one of the important quality attribute in foods. Okay, biasanya makanan yang berasaskan apa? What is the food? Yang based on the color. Contohnya, buah-buahan paling penting lah. Okay, musim harum manis. Okay. Siapa dah makan harum manis? Belum eh? Saya dah beli dah. Sebab so, saya kat pelis kan? <laughs> so, colour tu, uh, kalau kamu tengok harum manis uh, compared dengan another mangoes yang lain dia tak ada significant of the colour sebab kita pun kena perang kan? Uh, dia still hijau tapi dah masak rupanya. Uh. So untuk harum manis, saya tak suka manis. So untuk uh, mango yang mango yang lain macam mango apa eh mango ada yang mango selalu buat untuk um, kat Thailand dekat uh, dia orang buat pulut pelam. Ha. Mango lassi ha. So dia orang macam so yang mango jenis tu dia akan berubah warna kalau masak kuning. Habis kan? So that's why macam color changes is the important quality to check ataupun detect uh, the the food, the kind of quality of the food itself. So although it does not necessarily reflect nutritional, okay, tapi kita tak boleh tahu melalui color dia punya kandungan nutrition sebab kalau if you want to Uh, access or you want to know the nutrition value in the food, you need to do some assessment, experimental assessment about the nutrition uh, dari segi kandungan. Kalau kamu tengok susu lah, uh, dari segi kandungan kalsium dia, lagi apa, protein dalam tu. Okay. Flavor or functional values, it determines the acceptability of product by the consumer. So, instead of uh, chemical analysis, the color measurement may be used if a correlation is present between the presence of the color component and also the chemical in the food since color measurement is simpler and quicker than chemical analysis. Okay, in this case, uh, what is the qualitative measurement and what is the quantitative measurement? according to this statement. Siapa boleh jawab? Saya nak uh, through the chat. Okay, mana satu qualitative measurement and mana satu quantitative measurement? Tak ada jawapan pun? Color quality, oh betul? Okay, jenis. Okay, so the chemical analysis is quantitative. Okay. Beza quality, betul. Beza qualitative dengan quantitative biasanya uh, quantitative ni based on ice, naked ice. Okay. We see the changes of the color. Okay. But if we are using chemical analysis something like we measure the carbohydrate, we measure the uh, glucose content in the food itself. So we need to quantify it according to the number, okay? The concentration, okay? That's the importance of chemical analysis and it's proven uh, more accurate compared to qualitative, okay? So, Okay, dalam pasaran, uh, commercial one, ni bukan yang untuk food lah. Okay, kalau kamu tengok, uh, apa eh, kalau kamu tengok ni lah, uh, ni just information, additional information eh. Okay, pregnancy test sebab banyak lah kan, kit yang 
ada dekat Jai, uh, Giant bukan Guardian, Watson kalau kamu tengok tu dia based on qualitative kan sebab dia pakai membrane so kalau kamu drop uh, your punya specimen uh, kalau ada dua line means you are pregnant if one line no pregnant itu adalah qualitative okay so dari situ-situ kalau kuantitatif ada yang kalau dia boleh bagi tahu concentration contohnya macam glucose meter kan uh, sekarang ni macam uh, biasanya untuk orang-orang tua lah kan bila insulin hormon insulin dalam badan berkurangan kamu akan belikan mak ayah kamu uh, glucose meter yang ada dekat uh, uh, farmasi untuk check kita boleh monitor kita punya glukos dalam badan. Ha. That one is a quantitative measurement. Sebab dia ada limitation. Maksudnya kalau tinggi, apa yang kamu perlu buat, kamu perlu buat inform, kamu punya personal doctor. Macam tu. Okay, uh, we continue to our slide. For example, total carotenoid content of scratch can be determined from color measurement without performing a chemical analysis because there is a correlation between total carotenoid content and color for scratch. Okay, this is based on citation means franchise 1962 yang mula-mula mula-mula uh, she is the become the first researcher yang jumpa uh, correlation ni between total carotenoid contents. Okay, kor uh, carotenoid biasanya jumpa dalam sayur apa? Ataupun buah-buahan yang jenis macam mana yang kamu tahu? Okay, macam green Carotenoid ni uh, ada dalam minyak masak yang warna merah Uh, tomato betul. Lagi lobak, lobak merah banyak carotenoid contents. Uh, actually dalam minyak masak kita pun ada carotenoid. Dan uh, kalau nak kamu nak tahu palm oil uh, ada macam dibuat kajian uh, untuk minum 10 ml uh, minyak Kelapa, minyak kelapa sawit tapi yang warna merah tau bukan yang minyak masak yang kita guna ni ha. sebab minyak masak yang kita guna ni dia dah, dah ada penapisan sampai dia jadi warna tu dia bukan awal-awal dia jadi warna merah kalau kamu tengok kelapa, uh, biji kelapa sawit kan warna merah kan ha. so kalau itu yang keratonite banyak so dia dah tapis banyak kali jadi macam uh, minyak masak yang sekarang kita guna untuk masak tapi kalau dia still dalam warna merah yang macam uh, palm oil, uh, kelapa sawit tu uh, itu adalah sangat baik sangat tinggi uh, contents of carotenoid so sebab tu ada researcher uh, suggest uh, per day you need to take 10 mils uh, beta carotenoid palm oil tu untuk minum tapi tak adalah yang buat kan. So sebab sebab tak ada yang sanggup nak minum minyak. So that's why kita uh, dapatkan we get the carotenoid from other source. Something like macam carrot, tumbuhan yang warna merah. Uh, okay, lobak merah. Tapi dia warna kuning sebenarnya tapi still it has a carotenoid contents. Okay. Okay, follow the changes in color of product during storage, maturation, processing and so forth. So this is the important uh, based on the color itself uh, waktu storage, macam mana perubahan dia, waktu dia matured, processing and food uh, so forth. So sometimes uh, untuk export ataupun import, selalunya kita akan uh, harvest uh, this kind of food early Okay, so kita tak dapat fresh and then we uh, apply some chemical untuk ethylene eh, macam untuk lambatkan dia. Uh, 
ha, biasanya kalau dah sampai tempat yang jual baru dia boleh masak ha, so dia ada prolong so kita kena guna chemical juga untuk melambatkan proses uh, masak the uh, maturation so color is often used to determine the ripeness of fruit uh, usually this is a kind of problem for tomato actually uh, tomato kan cepat kan ripeness dia kan so dia cepat lembik dan dia cepat senang sangat degrade so that's the problem uh, including to pasarkan to market this kind of product. So example of color of quantity chip, uh, dia ada contoh is largely controlled by the red, uh, reducing sugar contents, storage condition of the potatoes and also subsequent processing. Ni potato chip yang usually makan uh, tapi dia banyak sangat bahan pengawet dan dia kita tak galakkan. We are not macam kamu makan setiap hari sebab kandungan MSG dia, kandungan pengawet dia is very high. So it's a kind of food yang kalau boleh sebulan sekali tu lah kalau kamu nak sangat makan boleh tapi jangan hari-hari because it can cause cancer also okay. So kalau boleh kalau nak makan potato chip, uh, chip buat sendiri much much better compared to yang kamu beli di pasaran okay. So color of flour, uh, flour reflects the amount of brand. Okay. In addition, freshly milled flour, flour is yellow because of the presence of phentophilis. Tapi kalau kita tengok kan, uh, flour, uh, flour yang kita tepung yang kita beli warna putih kan sebab dah melalui proses bleaching. That's why kalau yang fresh punya flour uh, is a yellow color because of the content of xanthophilis ni a kind of if I'm not mistaken a kind of antioxidant juga okay so that's why kalau nak makan roti pun roti yang bukan roti putih tau uh, roti yang ada fiber tu apa tu tapi saya tak suka lah sangat sebab tak sedap <laughs> okay okay this is the spectrophotometric curve this is a very important if you can see in the books, uh, okay, figure 4.10, one, one O, spectrophotometric curves. So because uh, according to the, why is the, uh, why is the reflect, eh, why is the reflectant uh, percentage uh, while for X, is wavelength in nanometer and you can see the reflectant based on the color reflectant okay so the color kalau kamu tengok blue awal-awal dia tinggi kan daripada 400, 500, 500 sini kot 500, 600 tu lebih kurang lah so pada awal-awal 400 hingga ke 500 dia tinggi and then dia nak bila menjauhi uh, approach to 700 nanometer, it will decrease. So the green color optimum at um, lebih kurang 700 uh, lebih kan? Eh? Uh, kat sini. So the yellow, okay you can see here and red from the optimum uh, around 700. So we can differentiate the color changes according to the spectrophotometric curves. Okay macam mana nak measure this one? Kamu ambil uh, contoh tomato. Kamu crushkan dia. Jadikan dia dalam bentuk uh, kamu tumbuk ke bukan tumbuk lah macam pecah-pecahkan sel-sel molekul dia sampai and then something letak buffer ataupun kamu letak lah distilled water. Okay Jangan, tapi kalau boleh perah, uh, perah dapatkan dia punya just solution, uh, bukan solid dia kena uh, remove. Okay, so dapatkan color merah and then kamu check dalam spectrophotometer. Okay, so yang ada spectrophotometer and then uh, it will gives the red color, 
spectrum photometer tak cover sampai 700 kalau saya tak silap. Selalunya kamu akan kena pakai juga UV visible. Okay, spectrum photometer. So akan dah bagi uh, bila kamu scan rate daripada 400 hingga 700 kamu akan dapat i kamu akan dapat peak ni yang rate tu okey so dia ada perbezaan di situ kalau tumbuhan macam green macam sawi okey sayur uh, tapi this one you need to crush it first and in the liquid form baru you need you can analyze the color contents according to the based on the spectrophotometric curves. Okay, kalau kamu ambil terus tu ni masuk tak boleh measure. Dia kena memang dalam bentuk solution. That's why we need to add on. Tapi kalau kita letak buffer kita dah dilute kan dia. Kalau boleh dalam bentuk yang dia still color yang sama. The concentrate one. Okay. So the color measuring equipment Categorized into two types. Okay, saya dah dah sentuh sebelum ni spectrophotometer and colorimeter. Okay, sebelum okay spectrophotometer banyak digunakan means the earlier instrument method for color measurement. <coughs> tak ada suara lah pula. On transmission or reflection of spectrophotometry. This one is found by Bill Mayers and Salzman in 1981 based on nanometer, based on the wavelength ni. Okay. In spectrophotometer through projector each which red, green or blue filter in front of the lens are required. So in this case for spectrophotometer they are using three different of color only. Okay. So merah, hijau, biru sahaja untuk menguji how to how to do the experimental awal-awal dulu. So the red, green or blue light beams are focused on a screen such that they overlap over half a circle. The other half is illuminated by another projector or by spectrally pure light from a prism or grating. This is the fundamental awal-awal uh, early found of spectrophotometer. Okay. Yang kamu tengok in your lab tu dah the new teknologi terkini. So dulu kalau spectrophotometer ni besar, okay, dia dah jadi bentuk bench top. Bentuk yang kecil yang kamu, uh, ada juga sekarang yang boleh bawa pergi infill. Bench top tu still tak boleh kira besar lagi kan. Ada yang saiz mini, saiz portable. Hmm, tapi agak mahal untuk dapat ini. Okay? Uh, eh? Tak nak? Okay, the standard observed curves. Spectral color can be defined in terms of the amount of red, green and blue by franchise 1983. Using the data in the figure this one, so uh, the color can be calculated from the early reflection or transmission spectrum in the spectral photo. The sample spectrum is multiplied by the spectrum of the light source E, the area under. And the curve is integrated in terms of X, Y, Z. X, Y, Z ni means kalau kamu tengokkan, uh, okay, X tu adalah red color, Y adalah green color and eh, uh, blue Z adalah blue color. Based on tadi color yang red, blue and green. Okay. So kamu kena uh, they are change into the X, Y, Z. So the spectral color can be defined in term of the amount of red, green and blue in this case. And actually it can be described uh, by the internal Ada yang baru join ke? Tak apalah, nak buat macam mana. Okay. So this is, uh, this standard observer curve is very important and actually is based on the spectrophotometric curves. But it using the relative response compared to the uh, spectral 
photometrical based on reflectance. Okay. So you you can see here. Um, okay, the analysis generate typically thirty or more data point which uh, precise color compared composition can also be calculated in this uh, term of diagram. Wait a minute. Okay. Okay. So this is the spectrum uh, photometer. Nanti kamu baca lah. Okay. Spectrum photometer contain monochromator and photoiod that measure the reflectant curves of a product color every 10 nanometer or less than that. So the analysis generate typically 30. Their repetition 30 times. Okay. 30 times. Okay. So this is which precise color composition can also be calculated. Okay, another one. Okay, this is the, uh, you can see in this slide, the spectrophotometer picture. Basically, yang dalam lab kita, uh, dalam biochem lab, yang warna hitam kan? Pasang tak? putih. Uh, dia ada banyak jenis tau and then dia ada banyak uh, maksudnya they have different specialities. Spectrophotometer pun ada banyak dia punya ni. Lain-lain. Okay. Itulah market. Instrumen market. So nak jual. Ada yang tak ada ni nanti boleh kamu boleh tambah kena tambah duit. Uh, biasalah untuk products. Punyanya untuk dapat keuntungan supplier use, using that kind of standard. Okay. Nak rehat tak? Okay, saya habiskan slide kita stop. Okay. Ada berapa slide lagi? Dua kan? Ha, okay. Dua slide. Okay. The advantage of spectral photometer over trees so, Melissa Columnity is the adequate information obtained to calculate color values of any for any luminance and metamerism. Difference in color in different lighting and also at different angle is automatically detected. However, high quality spectrophotometer are very expensive and measurement takes longer. Okay, now, why high quality spectrophotometer is very expensive? Because of that lah. Maksudnya because of bila makin uh, tinggi high quality dia akan makin mahal sebab uh, teringat kenangan lama dia. Yeah. Uh, okay uh, the end but definitely measurement take longer because uh, kalau buat scan rate pun daripada 400 hingga uh, 400 hingga 700 dia ambil masa dalam berapa minit untuk siapkan scan rate tu untuk calculation tu uh, dapat kamu punya peak tu. Okay. So dekat macam dekat dalam lab saya kami ada we buy nano drop. Tapi nano drop tu hanya untuk guna biomolecule saja. Tapi dia sangat cepat compare dengan kalau kita guna UV visible spectrophotometer. Uh, yang besar tu. Okay. So tapi uh, harga dia uh, more expensive compared to the UV spectrophotometer. Okay, before the, okay, another one to measure using color measure instrument instead of spectrophotometer, we are using colorimeter. So, but for the colorimeter, they have uh, a various kind of color instead of red, blue and green, they dah tambah additional color. So uh, the calculation of X, Y, Z tapi dia based on the spectrophotometer tadi. Data from spectra was very common but it required computational work lead to the development of electronic integration. This is a kind of engineer uh, combination between the uh, between the research, uh, researcher and also the uh, engineer that to develop electronic instrument. So trismetry calorimetry were developed since spectrophotometer integration was expensive. 
So the colorimeter is less expensive compared to the spectrophotometer but it highly developed. Okay, a tree stimulus colorimeter has three main components. First is source of illumination. Second, combination of filter. Because spectrophotometer pun ada filter tadi kan. Yang filter, tree filter according to the red, blue and green color. Used to modify uh, the energy distribution of the incident. In this case, reflected light. So the photoelectric detector ni yang uh, untuk detect the signal changes convert the reflected light tadi into electrical output. Okay. Actually colorimeternya macam saya buat sensor saya lah. Okay. Sensor saya pun uh, saya tukarkan chemical reaction yang ni foto elektrik eh. Uh, dia berdasarkan uh, optical cahaya. Tapi uh, in my uh, research, I changes the chemical reaction, the changes of the chemical into electrical output. So basically sensor is changing based on the changing of the energy that convert, conversion energy. Okay. So the colorimeter, each color has a fingerprint reflectant pattern in spectrum. So the colorimeter measure color through three white band filter corresponding to the spectral sensitivity curves. Okay, sensitivity limits. Okay, dalam untuk sensor, dia ada tiga tau. Specificity, sensitivity is very important. Okay. Uh. So each color has its own three Stimulus values that differentiate from another color. This value can be measured to determine if a color match is accurate based on the graph. They can also be used to determine the direction 